Brian and Hampstead has a different point of view. That's why he's up next. Go ahead, Brian. Welcome back again. Well, thank you very much indeed, George. I've al already been branded a liar. Well, uh, of course, you're regularly on my show, Brian, so you get lots of opportunities to have your own say. Well, I'm going to say something now, and I'd like you to refute it if you wish. First of all, you mentioned Ben Gurion. I don't know the quote, but um, there is rhetoric on both sides in any war that uh, both leaders, uh, the Arabs and the Jews and the British and the Germans, the Americans and Japanese, will always threaten each other with uh, incarceration to extinction. So I think we can discount that. But there's another point, George. I think uh, maybe your listeners don't know, and probably you don't know, that Ben Gurion, uh, as the, uh, the pre-state prime minister of Israel, um, actually had 40,000 of his soldiers fight in the British army against the Nazis. And the 51st um, commandos uh, were entirely... Uh, Jewish soldiers, German and Polish soldiers who fought from Israel for the British. The Palestinians, on the other hand, fought for the Nazis, the leaders in Berlin. So, you know, would you refute that? Am I a liar? Or no, is that just you keep speaking and then I'll have my say. Well, I just want an answer for No, me. no, just you keep speaking and then I'll have my say. It's that point. Brian, I want you to speak for as long as you want to speak and then I'll have my say. I've had my say. You can Thank you very much indeed, Brian. Now, why did the leader of the Stern Gang and later Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir personally assassinate the United Nations envoy to Palestine, Count Bernadotte of Sweden? Why? Yes. I can't recall exact circumstances. Well, let me ask you another question then. Why did the leader of the Irgun Zvai Leomi, the Israeli terror gang, later Prime Minister of Israel, Menachem Begin, destroy the village of Deir Yassin and kill almost 100 civilians in it. Right, George. Okay, Brian, I've got another one for you then. Why did the former general, former defense minister, and former Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, get cashiered from the Israeli government in 1982 after the massacre of thousands of Palestinian civilian refugees in Sabra and Shatila. Well, I, yes, I believe because he, he took uh, responsibility um, for standing by while he was murdered by, not by Israelis, but by the, uh, the phalangists. Fine, fine. Why did the Israeli terror gangs hang two British sergeants in the Orange Groves outside Tel Aviv during the period of the British Mandate? Why? Yeah. That was a reprisal. So, as a reprisal, they hanged two British sergeants from the Orange Groves as a reprisal. Why did, and this is my last question to you, Brian, why did the Zionist terror gangs blow up the King David Hotel in Jerusalem, killing 93 British civil servants? Well, because it was, it was a military headquarters. A lot okay. I, I think we've established something here, Brian. It's not been a wasted conversation. Israel was born in the blood of victims of terrorist outrages. And for you to come on here and talk about terrorism, when you've acknowledged each and every one of the terrorist outrages that I have adumbrated really says it all. Thanks, Brian.